Okay, so in this video I'll show you quickly how to use Excel to construct a graph that represents your enzyme uh, activity data. And what we want to end up with at the end is something that looks like this. Uh, what we have here is an XY scatter graph, and this shows uh, on the Y axis the rate of PMP production, and on the X axis the uh, pH. And so from this graph what you can very quickly and clearly tell is that uh, there's a peak in activity at pH 5, which suggests to us that the type of phosphatase found in these cowpeas is acid phosphatase. And also what we can see is that sample S activity is actually higher than sample I's activity, uh, which suggests that sample S has more phosphatase enzyme than sample I. Okay, so how do we get this graph? Let's go back to our data. What we want to do is we want to insert a blank graph. And to do that, just click anywhere where there's nothing really showing on your, uh, on your spreadsheet. Okay, and then you want to go up to the insert tab up here. Uh, the insert tab allows you to insert a scatter graph. So if you choose the scatter option, then you want to choose scatter with smooth lines and markers. So what you want to do, you click this option and what that'll uh, end up opening is essentially a blank graph. And so with this blank graph, what we need to do is we need to actually tell Excel what to plot onto this graph. And to do that, you right click on this blank chart area and then you go down and click select data. So what this will do is it will open up a dialog which allows you to tell Excel what exactly to plot onto your graph. And so what we want to do is we want to add two series. Uh, it, a series is just a line in uh, this particular type of graph. And so the first series we want to add is for sample S. So to add a series you click add and then you give it a name. Uh, you can either type in sample S, okay, or you can actually click into the series name box and just go and click somewhere on your uh, worksheet and that will automatically populate the series name with uh, whatever is in that cell. Okay, the next step is to put in the X values and the X values here would be pH, so 2.5, 5, 7.5, 10 and 12.5. So we click into the X values box then we want to highlight these five cells, okay, and this will select for us the uh, X values. And what we want to do next is specify the Y values, and so the Y values will here be the average activities uh, or average rates of PMP production at each of these pHs. Okay, so we go in and we highlight those, and then we click OK. So what we see already, if we get out of this dialog, we see already sample S has been nicely plotted onto a graph. Now we want to plot sample I onto the same graph. So to do that, we go back in. We want to right click onto the graph and select the or choose a select data option. And again, we want to add uh, the next series. So we click the add series button. We give it the name or we click the name. So series, sample I is the name. Uh, the X values again would just be the pHs. So two and a half all the way to 12 and a half. And the Y values, we click into that box, kill off the numbers that are there already, and then we select the average rate of PMP production for sample I. Okay, so we click OK, uh, and here we have our sample S series and also our sample I series. So we've got our data selected. Let's click OK and get out of this box. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got our nice graph. Uh, there's a bit of prettying up to do, and so we'll do that next. What we want to uh, essentially do here is to, uh, the grid lines are nice, but they're not necessary. Uh, they get in the way sometimes. And so to delete the grid lines, you essentially select the grid lines and then you hit delete on your keyboard. What's also happening here is uh, there's no axes labels. And so pH is on the X axis and rate of PMP reduction is on the Y axis. In order to put on the axis labels, you go up here to uh, chart tools, especially the uh, layout tab. Okay, so this layout tab up here, what it allows us to do is if you click into your chart, go up to chart tools, layout tab, you can essentially specify things like the axes title. You can specify where the legend, uh, which is this little thing down here. Okay, you can specify where the legend uh, is actually hiding or is shown on your graph. So first of all, let's uh, pick some axes titles. So to choose axes titles, what we want to do, click this, and then we can choose a horizontal or vertical title. So let's uh, do the horizontal one first. 
Okay, so we click the horizontal axis title. What we see is that uh, a dummy title comes up here. All we need to do is type our title on the keyboard, BH, and hit enter, and that should appear down there. We repeat this step for the uh, vertical axis. Okay, so again, we go to axis titles, uh, primary vertical axis title, and then we can choose one of these options. So let's go with the rotated title. So the Y axis actually shows the rate of PMP production and always have uh, units if you can on the axis and the units here are times 10 to the minus 6 molar per minute. Okay, let's just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the font's a bit small right now so we go to the home tab and then we can choose the font size. Let's make it 12 to make it a little bit more visible. Okay, so what we've got now uh, is essentially uh, we're getting close to the graph and what you want to do next is uh, let's pretty this up a little bit more. The legend is taking a lot of space and so what we can do is we can go to the chart tools layout tab again, go to the legend option and what we can do is we can uh, position the legend differently. And So what we can do is overlay the legend at the right okay, instead of having it take a lot of space so now we have the legend and we have the graph taking up more space. The other thing we can do is we can fix up all these decimal points here. So in order to change any of these axes, what you want to do is you essentially click onto the axis. Okay. Then you want to uh, double click on it and this will open up the format axis dialog box. And here you can change a number of things. And so for example, uh, this particular axis here goes into the negatives. If we want to choose to start this axis at zero, what we can do is we can choose the fixed option here. Okay, so this fixed option allows us to set, so for example, we can start the axis at zero if we wanted to. The other option here is that uh, we can set the type of number that is displayed on the axis. And right now what you see is that the number is being displayed up to three decimal places. And this is nice, but uh, probably unnecessary for our um, our experiment here. So maybe we'll just change that to one decimal place. Okay, and then we can click close and what will happen is that it will update the graph to show us uh, what we've just set. Okay, and since a lot of our data here is actually replicate data, and so for example what you have here in you know, pH 10 for sample S, you have four replicates essentially going into your data set. And so what you can do is uh, we've got a calculation here already of the error representation. Okay, it's called the standard error. What we can then do is put this onto our graph. And so to put on error bars onto our graph, what we want to do is you want to click onto your series. So for example, the sample S series, that'll select the blue dots essentially, the blue line. And then you want to go up to our chart tools layout and you want to choose the error bars option. Okay, so this will allow you to add error bars onto your chart. And the error bar option that you want to select is more error bars options. Now the reason for this is because Excel calculates its error bars a bit funny and you need to actually tell it what values to use for the error bars, otherwise they'll look really strange. And so what we want to do is we want to actually use a custom error amount. Okay, so come down here and click custom. Then you want to tell Excel which values you want to use uh, for it to plot as error bars onto the graph. So you want to specify the value, you click this button and then it'll ask you for a positive and negative error value. This is just how high and how low the error bars will be drawn. So let's kill off the values that are in there currently. Click the start afresh. And so what we want to do is since we've clicked on the sample I, sample S series, sorry, uh, we want to actually choose a standard error that corresponds to sample S. So we click into the positive error value box and then we select the error, click into the negative error value box and we select again the standard error. Then we click OK, then we click close. And what you'll see is that Excel has plotted uh, the vertical error bar correctly. What it also does sometimes, because it's a bit funny, uh, it decides to plot these horizontal error bars which you don't actually need. And so to kill them off, you essentially click onto the horizontal bars, you see how they're currently selected. Okay, so you select that and then you essentially hit delete on your keyboard and they'll disappear.
Okay, so the next step is to add it for the other series, and so if we click on sample I. Again, we go into Chart Tools Layout, go to Error Bars, go to More Error Bar Options, go to Custom Error Amount, and then we specify the values here. So if we delete what's there currently, and again, the positive value will just be uh, the standard error for sample I replicates for both the positive and also the negative error values. And again, Excel decides to plot the uh, horizontal error bars. We just select them and press delete to delete them. Okay, so essentially what we have here is uh, the graph. Just one final thing to tidy things up. Uh, this 10 to the minus 6, what you can do is you can actually make this minus 6 a superscript. And to do that, you want to select the minus 6. And then you come up to the Home tab. And in the Home tab, what you can do is you can select uh, the font or select to change the font and if we click this little button down here what it will show is it will uh, show us a bunch of options that we can set for our fonts or at least our selection currently so what we want is we want the minus six to be superscript and so we click superscript and then we click OK and then what that will do is it will return uh, the 10 to the minus six in superscript Okay, so what we've seen now is uh, how to use the XY scatter option uh, in Excel to plot a graph of uh, our enzyme activity. And if we go back to our uh, graph that we wanted to get to, we can see that it's essentially uh, what we've created.